with me today, doctors um, Otito and Okechuku or Stanley. We call him, some of us call him Okechuku, some of us call him Stanley, but hey, Oti and Stanley of the Gray Couch Conversations. Um, welcome. Thank Thanks you. for having us. So now, um, why am I excited about um, having Oti and, I call them Oti and Stanley. I'm going to call them Oti and Stanley for the purposes of this broadcast. Mm -hmm. But why am I so excited about having you here? Um, it's because there's something about you guys that strikes me every time I see you. And it's something you, you it's, it's a phrase that you use called ministry through the mundane. So first of all, I'd like you to tell me, either one of you or both of you, the story behind the Grey Couch Conversations. Ladies first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you were right, right? Like we've known each other since college. And when we were in college, you know, we we're kind of um, dating. And at that time we were, we knew that we will be doing something related to marriage. We felt like this was a calling and all of that, but we didn't know how it would, you know, play out. Mm -hmm. uh, then we got married, we located, well, we relocated to the U.S. individually at different points in time, got married. And then the kids came and were doing, you know, life. And it was beginning to get complicated, I would say, right? Um, all the things that you were kind of going through and all of that. And I think it was 2022 during COVID, right? That that word just came, like the gray couch, right? And it was, I, we do have a gray couch at home, but it, you know, it just kind of came, the word. Okay. And I thought to myself, what is this, you know? And that then the, the second word came of just, you kind of have to learn to live, you know, in the gray because I, used to you know i still have a problem <laughs> with um i don't want to say rigid thinking but it's kind of like you know um flexibility i would say and so it was like this is the thing that i am learning to do and going through and all that and learning to apply to my parenting and to my marriage and so we were like look you know we we're not pastors or anything we're seeing this day by day by day um, as we're living this and we were kind of also having a lot of people around us, you know, in this like me, what we call mid midlife marriages, right? When we say midlife, mm -hmm. either in age or in the season of life, right? Like the marriage itself, it's like teenage marriage and <laughs> like the same issues, you know? And so it was like, okay, maybe we start kind of a little channel where we're just, you know, discussing some of these issues and just really highlighting that point that some issues are going to be what you know John Gutman calls like mm -hmm. now like you kind of keep going over again in some ways and so it's just how do you talk through those things how do you walk through them using you know the word of God right because we're Christians and also using psychological principles that was very important to me because you know i trained as an organizational psychologist for that pre for that particular reason to just say how do i better understand human behavior starting from mine right and then you know just then looking out and just looking but out. can you tell me about what's on your t-shirt the four c's the so four c's okay not, not, not fantastic four okay. okay. but so i'm gonna read them it says conversation mm -hmm. points coupling and cradling and so is this would you say this is the great part would you say this is your framework yeah yes. you could call it that like it's kind of you know over and over we found that these are like the four pillars right the four things on which the marriage relationship in particular like you know most people might say other relationships no marriage because of the you know coupling and the cradling ideally so the conversations basically communication right coins is money uh, coupling is sex and then uh, cradling is parenting, right? We were just kind of trying to make it four seeds. <laughs> okay, and it, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so that was the kind of like if you were to touch on all the things that people normally have points of, you know, flashpoints on, it will it'll boil down to these four things, right? In any marriage relationship. So, so uh, there are people uh -huh. who have said to me things like, oh, um, you know, if you, as long as you're a Christian and you go to church and you're following God, your marriage should be fine. And they find that oh, maybe not. 
So can you tell me how, can you share with me how, because you mentioned psychological principles. Mm -hmm. Now, how do psychological principles, uh, I would say mesh with the spiritual principles that we know mm -hmm. from the Bible, you know, love one another, husband, mm -hmm. your wives, wives submit to your husband. Some people, that's the only thing they know about marriage from the Bible. By the <laughs> but, but how do, basically, how does one enhance the other? Yeah. So it's interesting because I, I, I'm not sure how psychology came over and, and kind of, I don't want to say took over, right? Because if you read about the history of many of the sciences, they were really founded on like scriptural principles. That's the way I see it. Mm. Um, you know, psychology is kind of like the science of the mind, the psyche, and you know, the spirit, soul, and body. So it's part of your, you're talking about one of the things of the tripartite beings that we are. And so in my mind, so let me, let me give you an example now, you know, when, um, when I started this work, right? As a Christian, you know, the Bible says, you should think about the things that are lovely, that are pure, that are of good report, you know, and all of that, yes. right? So you have that scripture and then you come to cognitive behavioral therapy, which everybody seems to, you know, be aware of. And literally yes. that's what it's telling you to do, right? To kind of interrogate your thoughts and not have any stories and you know make sure that the thing you are thinking almost like elevating your thinking right so that you're not thinking negative thoughts mm -hmm. and to me i'm like so what is the difference in these two things right is it because one of them is calling it something you know fancy oh, as yeah. well <laughs> right in that sense so if you were to do like a point-to-point -point comparison which you know as a scientist i'm always doing you'll find so many literally grounded in scripture literally like in that sense um and so i guess the work that i i do or the work that i try to do is to now explain these things to say you know this scripture you're reading the psychologists are telling you to do this thing so that you can now learn the principles for actually doing it you understand so now if the bible does say think on thoughts that are lovely and mm -hmm. true and all that that is logos that is just something that is written in that thing but how do you practice it because it's really hard to do in practice right to to you know think on lovely things when you're really mad at somebody <laughs> you know yes. and so the, the 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 therapy part or the cbt part is not teaching you the actual like techniques right to do or the things to do to stop and you know so it's I, I just feel like the two things are very complementary, right? From that point of view, um, in that sense. And then, you know, scripture, then the Rema part of it is what then keeps us like, it's what lights up the fire, right? In our spirits where we know the right thing to do and we're doing it. But to me, I just feel like the psychological part teaches you how to be a good human. Yeah. Then scripture, just that shows you right that you're already a good human you're just learning how to become every day right in that sense through practicing the psychological principles so before i switch to you 